Welcome to today's adventure. Today we're going to pull apart something a little different. We're going to pull apart a help file. Yes, a Microsoft help file. It can contain a virus. So let's pull it apart. Let's have a look. And if you like this, please subscribe. Otherwise, eh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Give me a comment. Tell me why you didn't subscribe. Give me some feedback. Tell me what you want to see pulled apart. So welcome to this episode. So today we're going to pull apart a CHM file, a Microsoft help file. Why would this file get through and why could it carry a virus? Well, the why about the virus we're going to see, but why does it get through? Because us guys in IT, we think about blocking COM files, BAT files, VBS files, JS files, EXE files, but we don't think about CHM help files. What is a help file? A help file is a compiled file. Is compiled from a set of HTML files with a hyperlink table of contents and an index file. The file format can be reverse engineered and that's what we're going to do today and the documentation on how to do that is actually widely available and you're going to see today quite easy. The file when you have a look at it has the magic byte of ITSF and it's written in ASCII which is an infotech storage format. Let's go ahead and have a look at the help file shall we? So here we have the help file for 7-zip. As you can see, it's got some hyperlink areas over here that open up over here information about what you clicked on. So it's quite a nice little format for getting help. It's really all it is. It's just a help file. So if you receive one of these in your email, would you expect it to carry a virus? Well, there's the catch. We let these things through, people open them up, and yes, they can carry a virus. So Let's have a look at what we got in our mail, shall we? Here we have a, looks like a billing information. And over here, dear client, as your personal manager, I'd like to inform you, your terms of your credit agreement terms have been changed according to the new bank policy, blah, blah, blah. First thing I would normally do is go into the properties of the header for each of these two emails, track down the IP address and find out exactly where they came from to see if I do know the senders which I don't. If you don't know how to do that, go to a tool like www.iplocation.net, type in the IP address you're looking for here, click IP lookup, and it will tell you where in the world this particular IP address that came from. It could be a mail server, it could be an end user IP address. Generally speaking, this is spam, so I'm not gonna get much information from it. So from these emails, I'm going to save down the zip file and we're going to have a look inside it. So here I have the MSG file. I generally like to save my emails out as an MSG file. So I've got a record of what I had. This is the attachment that was in the email and this is what came out of that attachment. So if I open up that zip file, as you can see, message.chm, I've now pulled that file out and here it is. Now, I've actually extracted the contents of this by simply renaming it to .zip and opening that with 7-zip. And there it is, the decompiled contents of this CHM file. So you can just save that out as a normal everyday bunch of files. Before we do that, let's jump into virus total and confirm we're dealing with a virus. So as we can see from virus total, 32 engines have detected this as some kind of a virus. In fact, yep, there's a lot of detections there. If you go to details, you can find a bit more about this particular file. And if you go to the community, you can get some feedback on what other thoughts are on this. And as we can see, it's going to download a test.exe file. And as we can also see, it goes to a website and posts back to a PHP page. And in the little bit above here, we can see some of the code it uses and a link to the hybrid analysis. So let's go have a look at the hybrid analysis. Here we have that particular file going through the sandbox. We can see that it goes to this particular URL. Um, we can see that a large number of engines have declared it's a virus. We knew that anyway. We can see it's suspicious again because it goes to that URL. 
we can see it's trying to be stealthy and it runs hh.exe which is the Microsoft help file running tool that's what it's associated with and we can keep going down this and we can see if there's any dropped files yes there should be there'll be a test.exe um, and as you go down you can see how the files made up you can see any screenshots obviously not a very successful help file because it doesn't actually come up with any information on the screen and you got some network analysis as well and I'll put these links in the description so you can have a look at that in your own time having a look at these names of the particular virus that we found if we go to one of these say for instance Microsoft's detail on it we get to this page and this tells us all about what this virus actually does it tells us how it can affect the system and how they can detect it and how they can remove it now it's really good that these help files um, it's kind of no longer used anymore. They were very heavy in Windows 98, got converted through to XP and still in use in Windows 7, but they're not really used that much anymore. So let's have a look at this actual files that have been extracted. So going into the extracted folder, we can open up each one of these one at a time with Notepad++. And opening up this one here, I can see that this help file was compiled using htm to chm and then it contains a test.htm file and we can go through and look in all of this but where it really gets interesting is this test.htm file if we open that up and we can see the title is run calc.exe and then we look a little bit closer as we come down we can see a powershell command we can see a download file command we can see the test.exe file being requested and we can see it being saved as natmasala2.exe so as you go through this it's quite malicious you've got fake images coming up to convince you you've not uh, been hacked but you have in fact been hacked all sorts of icons so there's all sorts of stuff there to make it look like you actually did get to a website and that nothing actually bad has happened but in reality, in the background, it's downloaded and executed that executable file, which is actually quite malicious and dangerous. So we've got to the bottom of what this CHM had in it. All the user had to do was double click the zip file, double click the CHM file. That file will come down and it will run. And then, of course, you're infected with whatever that carries. So this is a downloader. How about we have a look at that second CHM file? So here we've extracted out the second help file. And of course we can do the same thing we can open this with 7-zip and extract out the files going through all of these files i came across this one which indicates it was compiled using the microsoft help compiler version 4.74 it also indicates that it has a file in it called triple nine dot html if we go down to triple nine dot html and open that with notepad plus plus similar to what we saw before this time we've actually got a command being initiated we've then got a http object being created um, it is then running tt.vbs it's putting into that file a whole lot of text and then it's downloading another vbs file um, it's downloading an exe file uh, it's writing it to your hard drive and obviously trying to run that so a slightly different tactic this time but same sort of thing, either PowerShell or VBS, either way. Um, these things then run on your machine and infect you. For further information on how to decompile a CHM, I'll put this link down in the description. This is the program that was used to create that first one that you saw, which is a free download. Now, if we look at the second one and put that through Virus Total, we get a similar result. A whole heap of positives here. And if we go through to, the, through to the community tab, someone has been kind enough to export out that actual information about how it creates the VBS file and downloads things as well. So this is how easy it is. And of course, that second one was compiled using the Microsoft Help Workshop, which you can download for yourself. So quite simple to create your own virus, really. And uh, of course, we don't look for CHM files being viruses, so we don't really ignore them, but we also don't obviously observe them. Don't, they don't stand out to us. 
um, we should think about any file can contain a virus. And that's your introduction to how a help file can be malicious. So I hope this short video has been of help to you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you want to see more of these. So subscribe, ring the bell, give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up would be really good. And uh, yeah, let's see you next time. This episode of Mickey J. White Hat brought to you by the Virus Doctor. Be sure to go and check him out. Ken Dwight, Master of Mystery here, unravels the mysteries. He brings to light all the ways you can conquer malware. He takes you through some easy steps. Those easy steps help you conquer malware quickly. So go to the website, The Virus Doctor. Check it out today. And if you use special coupon code MickeyJ15, you will get 15% off the course you choose. Thanks very much to The Virus Doctor for sponsoring this episode.